The information discussed in this PillCast episode are merely opinions and do not constitute formal policy or legal guidance of any kind. Hello, and welcome to another PillCast, the video blog where we talk about important federal procurement innovation concepts in 10 minutes or less. We guarantee it. I'm Monica Taylor with the Department of Homeland Security's Procurement Innovation Lab, also known as the PILL. And I'm Scott Simpson, also with the DHS PILL. So in this episode, we want to talk about award decisions and paying the price premium. Let us know in the comments if this has ever happened to you. You are conducting an evaluation and two vendors receive the same rating. For example, high confidence. Were you told that the government must award to the lower price of the highest rated offers unless you wrote a lengthy trade-off document? Did you find it difficult to justify the price premium? Have you ever heard of this scenario, Scott? I definitely have, Monica. It happens often, but the government can make an award to other than the lowest priced offer or the highest rated offer without writing a thick novel. The government must simply document its rationale for paying the associated price premium. And that rationale, it doesn't have to be long. We can look at a GAO case for guidance. The GAO case we'll reference in this pill cast is case number B-419712, dated July 8, 2021. The protester alleged that the government unreasonably and unequally evaluated quotations, conducted unequal discussions, and made a flawed best value trade-off decision. We're gonna focus on that third allegation. Now, to give a little bit of background, the DHS Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE, awarded a FAR Part 16.505 task order for analytical services in support of ICE's Enforcement and Removal Targeting Operations Division. The protester argued that the agency conducted a flawed best value trade-off. They asserted that DHS failed to document a meaningful trade-off between the protester and the awardee under the most important evaluation factor prior experience, and draft staffing plan with resumes. The protester contended that although two vendors received identical high confidence ratings under the prior experience and draft staffing plan with resumes factor, factor one, the protester's quotation contained superior elements to the awardee, but the agency failed to meaningfully consider these differences in its trade-off. Now, this was a two-phased evaluation. Phase one consisted of one factor, prior experience and draft staffing plan with resumes, which, wow, that's a mouthful. Factor two consisted of two factors, technical approach and price. Now, factor one was significantly more important than factor two, technical approach, and that was significantly more important than factor three, price. And the awardee was about 3% higher than the protester and the source selection authority had concluded that the price premium associated with the awardee's quotation was justified based on the superior benefits of the awardee's proposed technical approach over the protester. Now the GAO in its ruling stated, the agency's rationale for any price technical trade-offs made and the benefits associated with the additional price must be adequately documented. However, There's no need for extensive documentation of every consideration factored into a trade-off decision. Rather, the documentation need only be sufficient to establish that the agency was aware of the relative merits and costs of the competing quotations and that of the source selection was reasonably based, unquote. And interestingly, the team didn't find any discriminators in the most important factor prior experience and draft staffing plan with resumes. That is a mouthful, Scott. GAO stated that although the agency did not find any discriminators in either quotation with respect to the prior experience and draft staffing plan with resumes evaluation factor, the record supports that the source selection authority thoroughly considered both quotations under this factor, including all of the relevant confidence increases. 
Ultimately, the agency's trade-off found relevant discriminators only within respect to factor two technical approach. And that's okay. The agency concluded that these discriminators in factor two warranted the price premium. And while the agency didn't find any discriminators with either quotation under the prior experience factor, factor one, the GAO found that the best value trade-off was adequately documented and reasonable. Protest denied. So there you have it. You can make a war to other than the lowest price offer and your trade-off document doesn't have to be voluminous. You just need to discuss the relevant discriminators that warrant the price premium. But in order to do so, you should keep your solicitation language flexible and tailor the requirement and appropriate FAR part. Consider not including a statement in your solicitation that says, as technical factors become more equal, price will become more important. Or at minimum, at least say may. We like flexible language here at The Pill. And we really wanted to highlight this because when using an advisory down select in your procurements, we highly recommend phase one factors be the most heavily weighted factors, the most important ones, and that the importance is carried through to the final trade-off decision. This gives the advisory down select some teeth. You wanna keep it light, but it has to be meaningful. Now, although it can be the most heavily weighted factor, you can still identify discriminators with the most important factor or the remaining factors. It's up to you. So let the process play out. The government should always reserve the right to award to other than the lowest price offer or the highest technically rated. We can pay the price premium and the documentation does not need to be a novel, just adequately documented and reasonable. We highly encourage you to read the entire GAO case check out the link in the description. There are some great highlights, not just about the trade-off, but about those other two protest points as well. Thank you for joining us today. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe to this video and our channel. And we'll see you on our next PillCast episode.